Hello everyone, my name is Keely. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome to Vlogmas episode 4, the last episode, and Merry Christmas! It is currently Sunday, December 25th, and my dog just barged his way into my room. Come here, Remus. Come say Merry Christmas. Happy Chrysler. Merry Christmas. Wait, let's take a thumbnail. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, after my dog interrupted. Um, but what was I saying? It's Christmas. Oh my goodness. And this year, Christmas fell on a Sunday, so things are a little different. So we had an early Sunday service at 10 a.m. instead of 11. So this morning I woke up and I ran. I ran four miles, a little Christmas run, and then we had church. Now normally we do gifts and like everything as soon as we wake up, but because we had church today, we are currently hiding away in our rooms while our parents play Santa, because even though me and my brother are almost 30, we still play Santa, okay? And they're gonna text us when they're ready, and we're gonna run to their room like we usually do, and we're gonna open gifts and do all the stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan for today. It's gonna be a chill day. As for this week, my brother comes home. He's in the Navy, and so he gets to come home this week. And then we are doing family Christmas, like, on the 30th, I think, which will be in Austin. So that'll be fun. But yeah, Merry Christmas. Let's get down to Christmas business. All right, good morning. It is December 26th. It is Monday, the day after Christmas, and I have quite a bit that I want to get done today because this is going to be a filming day for me. I have a lot of videos planned for the next two weeks, and so I want to get some film today. I want to film at least two videos, maybe a third one if I feel like it, but first, before we do all that, let me tell you about what I've been reading. So yesterday, I forgot to update you after my run. I did read more of Champion. I was listening to this during my run. If you haven't watched any of my recent Vlogmas videos, this is a reread for me. I've been rereading the series. So I don't have like a whole ton of thoughts because this is a series obviously I've read before, but I don't remember a lot, but it also was never my favorite dystopian series. So I just feel kind of like a middle road about it, but I'm having fun rereading it because it is very nostalgic for me. So before yesterday, I was at 52% of the way through. And then after my run, I ran four miles and now I am 70% of the way through. So I'm hoping maybe I can finish this tomorrow. We'll see um, if not tomorrow, then the next day. But yeah, so I'm almost done with that. And then I also picked up Tis the Season for Revenge by Morgan Elizabeth. This is on Kindle Unlimited. And this story is very steamy. But we follow a girl named Abigail. And at the beginning of the book, she is dating this horrible, horrible, emotionally abusive, manipulative man. And she doesn't realize that he is abusive. And she is expecting he is going to propose to her. But instead, he breaks up with her. So what does she do? She wants revenge on him because he is trying to be in this big time hotshot lawyer corporation thing. He's trying to be a partner with someone and he is just not a good person. So she wants to have revenge on him. So she gets on a dating app and who does she match with? His boss. So she's trying to get revenge on him by getting with his boss. And then his boss's name is Damien and we also follow Damien's point of view. So it's interesting because Damien seems like a really good guy so far. Um, even though her boyfriend always bashed him, always hated him, but that just shows you like he's a terrible guy so he doesn't know what good is you know um but so far so fun i think i'm like 31 percent of the way through we just got to the first spicy scene and it was okay it wasn't like my favorite thing i've ever read but it was like not also the worst thing i've ever read um but it's been fun so far and i can't wait to see the look on his face when he sees his ex-girlfriend with his boss because i know it's gonna happen and i also have an assumption if there is a third act breakup i know what it's gonna be um but yeah i'm just having fun with it it's a good time so far so I am planning on reading more of that, but mainly I am going to film today, so I will see you later. Okay, I just finished filming. I filmed two videos. The first video I filmed was my January TBR, and my second video I filmed was my worst books of 2022, and I accidentally ranted so much. Like, I am worried I'm going to offend people, but that's okay. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. I tend not to watch worst books videos because I get my feelings hurt really easily. <laughs> So we'll see. It was a lot of fun though, but I definitely went off on some really popular books. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. Okay, good morning. It is Tuesday, December 27th. It's like 9.50 in the morning. I just got home from running and then I did a leg workout. I did four miles this morning. And of course, while I was running, I listened to more of Champion. So I got to 82% today. I'm on page 304, so I have this much left. And I lied, I'm not gonna be finishing it today. Maybe during tomorrow's run, we'll see how far I get. Um, but yeah, thoughts are still the same. I'm almost done with it. And like, I 
don't know. I just feel like my rating and my enjoyment is lower than the last time I remember. And that's because, maybe that's because like the first time I read it, it was just like, woo, yay. And now it's like, okay, I've seen this before and I've seen it done better, but I'm still having fun. Don't get me wrong. It's just never going to be my favorite, but I do really love Day. Like he's a great one. Really like him. Um, but as far as tis the season for revenge goes, yesterday I got to 46% of the way through. And let me tell you, the main girl in this, Abigail, I feel like me and her would tussle. Like, we would not be friends. A lot of the things she says goes against, like, everything I believe in. Like, she hates running, and she likes warm weather and getting tan. And one thing that I hate in books or in real life is when people make me feel like you can't be beautiful unless you get tan. And you can see me. I can't get tan physically. And not that I really want to because I'm comfortable with my skin now, but I hate when other people see paleness as ugly or just not beautiful because to me, I feel beautiful. So I just hate when people try to make me feel like I'm not. And she has said things many times where I'm just like, mm, don't like that. She's also so dumb. Like I understand the cycle of abuse is real, but she is also dumb. Like she's just dumb. And she keeps talking about, I can't believe I didn't see that before. Like how many times is the line gonna be like, oh, that was a red flag. I can't believe I never saw this before. She's said it like three or four times and it's so repetitive, it's so annoying. So me and Abigail just do not get along. On the other hand, Damien, I have mixed feelings about him because a lot of times he'll say and do the right things. And I'm like, oh, he's really sweet, he's a gentleman. But then he's also incredibly possessive. And not like the cute but toxic Edward Cullen way, but like, no, this is kind of a gross way. Like he will always tell her, you're mine. But yet at the beginning he was like, I'm not looking for anything serious, like we're just having fun. But he's constantly like, you're mine, I don't share. And the way he says it just makes me feel gross. Also the little nicknames and the dirty talk he does with her, not for me. I don't like it. Like he needs to stop. Once again, it's repetitive. Um, but don't get me wrong, I don't hate this book. <laughs> I just don't love it, okay? Does that make sense? Um, but yeah, I'm planning on reading more of it today and we'll see how far I get. Yesterday, I also did watch Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I have been watching so many Harry Potter TikToks and I just like could not hold back anymore. So I put it on, I cried, I had a great time. I recited every line word for word. It was great and I love it. Um, today I'm gonna see if my parents want to watch Uncharted which is that movie with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg and it is one of my favorite movies that I watched this year so I'll see if they want to watch that with me but for now I'm gonna go eat breakfast and then I'm gonna read some more <laughs> okay so I just finished Tis the Season for Revenge and oh boy I am so sad that I already filmed my worst books of 2022 because this would have made the list because I gave it one star. It definitely wasn't the worst out of all of my worst list books, but it still would have made the list. Um, so we already know I want to fight Abigail. That never changed. want to deck her, but I also kind of want to deck Damien and not in a good way because he, I feel like he just has so many red flags. Like the way he talks to Abigail in the bedroom like maybe I know some people are into that but for me I'm like mm, that's borderline abuse like I hate the way he talks to her I hate the way he talks in general and how he has to say yeah at the end of every sentence he says or he has to call her a nickname after everything he says hate it so much um I really don't like Abigail I think she's a toxic human being as well um not great I just I just didn't really enjoy it um, I don't know what else to say. I just think that it's full of toxicity and it wasn't cute. And there was another point that I had to make, but I really can't remember what it is now. Um, but yeah, I thought this was going to be all cute and fun. And the fact that the relationship started out of a lie, that's just something that I don't like either. Um, I'm totally on board when it's like fake dating, when both parties are involved in that. But in this case, she was dating him to get revenge on her ex. And so Damien had no idea. Oh, I remember the point I was going to make. Oh my gosh. Okay, Damien, we were supposed to love and think that he was the greatest gentleman in the world when he does the bare minimum. Like, the bar's right here, and he, like, he barely hits it. 
she literally lost her mind because he wrapped a Christmas present for her. She was like, oh, he wrapped it himself. Okay, so does my dad. So do most decent human beings in the world. Like, I just, oh my gosh. Like, I understand she was in a terrible relationship, so, like, the bare minimum is amazing for her. But, like, after the 12th time, girl, we get it. We get it. Um, but yeah, so this was not good, so hopefully I can read something between now and the end of the year that'll make up for this, because not a great way to end the year. But I will say I have now read 150 books, the most I've read in a year by far. Last year was my best year with 127, I believe, and now I'm at 150, and I think I can get one, maybe two more in there. We'll see. I'm not sure what I'm going to pick up, but for the rest of the day... Um, I might just watch TV or something. I haven't watched The Amazing Race in a few days. Like, who am I? I don't know. Maybe I'm changing. Who knows? Just kidding. I think the reason I haven't watched is because season seven has Rob and Amber from Survivor on it. And Rob and Amber are some of my favorite people on this planet. Boston Rob, favorite Survivor person ever. Love him. And everyone on this episode or this season of The Amazing Race hates Rob and Amber for no reason other than the fact that they were on Survivor. And so it hurts my soul every time it's like, Every time someone's like, oh, I hate Rob and Amber, they're terrible, and I'm like, they're literally not, <laughs> okay? And so I just hate that. Um, but yeah, I love Rob and Amber, so maybe I'll watch that, maybe I'll watch some CSI. Um, I also started a K-drama, If She Never Knew, so maybe I'll watch another episode of that. Who knows what the night holds? It's only 4.30, so the day is still young. I might also pick up another book. Who knows? I guess you'll find out in the next clip. Okay, good morning. It is Wednesday, December 28th, and my little brother comes in tonight. Um, like I said, if you haven't seen my other videos, or I don't even know if I've said it in this video, he's in the Navy, and he lives in Virginia. So he's flying in tonight, but he is flying in at like 11.30 p.m. I go to bed at 8 p.m., so I'll be seeing him tomorrow. Not tonight, because the airport's also like an hour away, so it would be way too late for me. Um, but... Yesterday, I decided to pick up The Firekeeper by, I think it's by J.C. Cervantes, and this is book two in the Storm Runner series, and this is in the Rick Riordan Presents, like, imprint, so I'm trying to read all of the imprint, or all of the books under that imprint, because I love mythology and Rick Riordan, he's great, and this one in particular is Mayan mythology, and so it's really cool, um, it's interesting reading about new mythologies that like I've never heard of because I learned so much about it. So in this one in particular, in the first book anyway, we follow a boy named Zane and he lives with his mother in New Mexico and he's kind of like hidden away. Like he doesn't know quite yet that he is like hidden away, but he's being hidden because he is, you guessed it, half God and the gods are actually trying to take out all the Godborns and so he has to be hidden. And so he's coming into his own powers and he actually has a disability where one leg is shorter than the other, but that's where his like God powers come into play is through his disability and through his short legs. So it's really cool that this book takes that and it's just like, no, like he's still powerful, he's still great, and he is still just as good as anyone else that has, you know, able-bodiedness. Um, and he also has a really cute dog in this. So yeah, I'm reading the second one. I got 5% of the way through yesterday and then I read some this morning and I think I'm now like 10% of the way through. And this morning on my run, I ran four miles again, so I finished Champion by Marie Lu. And oh my goodness, I forgot how this ends. And this ends in my least favorite trope of anything ever. And I completely forgot. I guess I just blocked it out of my memory because I hated it so much. So I gave it two stars because oh, I hate when stories do that. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. Okay, but yeah, two stars for that one. So now I can finally read the last one, which I'm hoping to get to in January. It's on my January TBR. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for my update. I'm gonna go eat breakfast and then I'm gonna read some more and we'll see how far I get today. Okay, I just needed to update you real quick. Um, as far as reading goes, I am 30% of the way through The Firekeeper and I'm enjoying it a lot more than I anticipated because honestly, most of the Rick Riordan Presents books that I've read have just been kind of mediocre for me. But I feel like this series is gonna be like one of the top ones for me. Um, I believe the first book I gave like three stars, but this one I feel like I'm enjoying more. So we'll see how it ends up. I still got a lot to go. But I just finished watching Matilda the Musical on Netflix. 
oh my gosh. So I love Matilda. Matilda the Musical was one of my favorite shows I watched when I live in London. I absolutely loved it and I have been like craving that music ever since then. And this just hits everything. The little girl who plays Matilda, she's amazing. She's going places. She's going to be so big. Also, the actress who plays Miss Honey, she's perfect for Miss Honey. Like, I can't picture anyone more perfect than her. And of course, Emma Thompson did amazing. And all the musical numbers hit. They just hit so hard. I definitely recommend it. And I just really loved it. I'm going to watch it on repeat forever. <laughs> Good morning. It is Thursday, December 29th. It's actually almost not morning anymore. It's about noon and I am about to film some videos. So today is another filming day for me. I'm going to film at least two videos. So we'll see if I do another one or not. Um, as far as reading goes, yesterday I got 36% of the way through The Firekeeper and this morning I read a little bit more. So I'm at 39% of the way through. So we'll see if I get to read more of that today but I know I'm going to be filming today. I need to edit and get my videos all ready to go because tomorrow we are going to Austin for family Christmas. So I'm going to be busy tomorrow and the next day. So it's going to be a crazy couple days, but I'm very excited. So let's get to filming. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, December 30th, and I have some reading updates for you. We are also about to leave for Austin for our family Christmas. We're going to get together with all of my aunts and uncles and cousins that live in different places all over Texas. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. It takes about two hours to drive there. It's a really easy drive. So I'm really excited for that. But as far as reading goes, so I made it to 46% of the way through The Firekeeper yesterday. And honestly, I'm struggling a little bit. It's not bad and it's not necessarily boring, but I keep zoning out while I'm reading it. And that's not what you want to happen when you're reading a book. So I'm just like struggling with how I feel with about it because I can see its merits and like I'm interested in where the story's going and I want to finish it but I keep having to reread some parts because I'm just like reading without actually taking in the words if that makes sense. So right now 46% of the way through that so hopefully I'll finish that within the next two days. It'd be awesome if I could finish it before the new year but we will see. I also started reading this next book in October when it first came out, but it's one of those books that I am taking my time with and only reading a few pages here and there, and that is Madly Deeply by Alan Rickman. These are his diaries that were recently published. And so this week I was on like page 40 and I started reading like the past two days and now I'm on page 60. I'm also going through and annotating. You can't really see, but I have a few tabs in there. Um, but I cannot wait until we get to the diaries during the Galaxy Quest and Harry Potter years. That's just going to be so good. But there's so much in here that you can truly see who he was and his character. And he was so open and accepting and loving while also being very cold and <laughs> very serious but I love Alan Rickman and it's so special getting to read this so I just wanted to update I'm not planning on finishing anytime soon but I have read a few more pages here and there over this week and then finally the third book I have to talk to you about is my next audiobook during my runs so this morning I ran four more miles and it went really good I felt so good this morning I can't wait until I can finally start running more again because my foot is finally feeling pretty good when I run so Fingers crossed I can do more next week. But the audiobook I decided to pick up was Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake. This is a reread for me. If you don't know, I only listen to audiobooks if it's a reread for me because that's the only way I can understand the story. I first read this book in 2016. It's a duology and I'm rereading it so I can finally read the second one because I never got to it. But I do remember really enjoying this book when I read it. And rereading it again after several years, it is so... Like, I don't know, it's so different than what you would expect because basically this is a young adult supernatural. So it follows a boy named Cass. He's 17 years old and he hunts ghosts and he was sent an anonymous tip with this note that just had the name Anna written in blood. And so he is going after a ghost called Anna and they say she's dressed in blood because she's super bloody and she kills kids. So he's going after this ghost to defeat it. So the thing is, even though this is young adult, for me, it reads a lot older. Well, not maybe a lot, but it reads older. Um, and I just know it's because the language that's used, there's a lot of cursing in it. And um, the fact that he's 17, Cass is 17. Um, for some people, the language might not mean that it reads older. But for me, it does read older because of that. But I am enjoying it so far. It's also a lot bloody and gorier than you would expect like a young adult horror to be. Um, this, I guess this is horror. Yeah, horror thriller. Um, but once again, it was published years and years ago. So 
go into it knowing that. Um, but I'm enjoying my reread so far. I just didn't expect to be hooked from the beginning. Even though I enjoyed it in 2016, I didn't know how I would take it now. But yeah, so I am 17% of the way through. So I'm on page 68. So already got a good start going for this one. So hopefully I can read more within the next few days. I also realized I didn't show you anything that I got for Christmas. So because we're doing family Christmas um, today, I only opened a few gifts from like my parents and one of them was this shirt. It actually came in the mail late. It came in yesterday and this says Mr. Irrelevant hashtag 262 and it has the San Francisco skyline. Um, so I accidentally really got into the NFL this year and Mr. Irrelevant is Brock Purdy, uh, third string quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. And he was the last pick in the draft, so he was named Mr. Irrelevant, and he is irrelevant no longer, so I love this shirt. But let me show you one other thing that I got. Okay, so one of my favorite items is my Hydro Flask. So I am finally a Hydro Flask girly, and I'm so excited about it. And my mom also got me some stickers. So I put my pals, my friends on here. So I have my little penguin sticker right here, and then I have a little ghosty right here and then a little Boston Terrier right here. If you don't know, I own two Boston Terriers, so this is like perfect for me. And then a few other things that I got, um, I got some running shorts. I got two pairs of like some of my favorite running shorts. They're like neon colors and they're just so flowy and light and I love running in them. And quite possibly the best gift I received was this tiny Nutella. <laughs> Look at it! Oh my gosh. Okay, so I am obsessed with Nutella. Usually two out of my three meals a day consist of some type of Nutella. I know, that's horrible. I'm trying to cut back on sugar, but I am weak for Nutella. And so my mom put this in my stocking. It's just so cute. I love it. Okay, so those are all my updates right now. I am taking my camera with me, so we'll see if I can vlog while I'm there and maybe show you what I get and things like that. But I am very excited. We also come from a family of bakers, and I have the curse of the sweetest tooth in the world, so I know I will be eating a lot of really, really tasty treats. <laughs> good morning it is saturday december 31st it is the last day of the year and i'm currently in austin visiting my family we had family christmas yesterday and so we're all gonna have breakfast today and then leave i'm still in my running clothes because i just got back from running me my dad and my sister ran around town lake this morning and it was so much fun it felt so good outside and it was so nice because we got to be around so many other runners and it's just fun being around like-minded people um, I did four miles, and during that, I listened to more of Anna Dressed and Bled, and now I am 32% of the way through. I'm having a really great time with this um, reread. I just forgot so much about it, and really like how bloody it can get, um, so it's a lot of fun. And then yesterday, I read up to 60% of The Firekeeper, so I am hoping I can finish it today, but we are driving two hours home, like, yeah, two hours home today. So, and I can't read in the car, so we'll see if I get it done, but you'll find out, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the reading updates I have for you. And let me show you what I got yesterday. I got a few books for my family. Oh, before I show you the books, I want to tell you on my run today, I ran into one of my favorite running TikTokers. I completely forgot she lives in this area and I was finishing my run and she ran by and I was just like, oh my gosh, I follow you on TikTok. And she's like, oh, thank you. And she's just so sweet. Really love her. So that was cool. But now moving on to the book stuff. The first one I want to show you is Baking It Easy. So this is actually a baking book. I really love baking. I don't like cooking, but I love baking. And this is like easy recipes. I follow this girl uh, fit waffle on Instagram and so I really like all her videos she does so I wanted to get her cookbook so my aunt got me this along with a little spatula so I'm gonna go through these and like cook everything one at a time and because I'm me I have to cook everything in order so that's fun but yeah I'm really excited because they all look super delicious now one of my other aunts got me this book called The Winter Duke it's by Claire Eliza Bartlett and I honestly don't remember putting this on my wish list. Like I feel like I didn't and this is just a random book she saw and thought of me. So I really don't know what it's about. It says someone wants to help her, someone wants to use her, and someone wants to kill her. 
Um, it also seems like there is a sleeping sickness no one can find a cure for. So it sounds like a typical like setup for a fantasy. So also the fact that there's a sleeping sickness like in this, I'm always a sucker for anything with like a pandemic or like an illness or things like that. So hopefully this is good. Also winter and this cover, that's me, you know, I am winter. So another book my aunt got me. So me and her, we are both really into penguins. Penguins are my favorite animal and they are also her favorite too. So she had to get me this book and it was on my wish list. And that is How the Penguins Save Veronica by Hazel Pryor. And I put this on my wish list because penguins and that's literally it. So it says a curmudgeonly but charming old woman, her estranged grandson and a colony of penguins prove it's never too late to be the person you wanna be. So I'm pretty sure she is, yeah, she's 85 years old, Veronica, and she goes to Antarctica to spend time with the penguins. And then I believe she convinces the researchers to rescue a baby penguin. Sold. Favorite book of the year? <laughs> okay. And then I have one more book to show you. And that is when I, what I talk about when I talk about running by Hiriko Murakami. And I have never read anything from this author before, but I know he's like one of the most highly acclaimed popular authors in the world, but I've never really been interested in his books until this one. So this is a memoir all about him training for a marathon. And the fact that you have Hiriko Murakami and running, you know this is gonna be beautifully written. And I'm just really excited because I always look for anything about running and any nonfiction books about it. So this is gonna be perfect. So those are all of the physical books I got. I also got a $10 Amazon gift card, which I will be using to purchase a book. <laughs> of course I will. Um, but yeah, I'm very thankful for my family for getting me gifts, um, especially books, because they know me. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I have for my update right now. I am going to get ready, and then my aunt is making breakfast. I'm gonna eat, and then we're gonna go. And yeah, I'll see you later. All right, just a quick update to tell you that we made it home. It is 3.20 p.m. I am now 73% of the way through The Firekeeper. My Kindle says I have an hour and a half left to read for the book, so we should be able to finish today. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna read my book so I can finish one last book for 2022. All right, everyone, it is time to wrap up my final book for 2022 and end my final vlog of 2022. So I just finished The Firekeeper by JC Cervantes and my feelings probably haven't changed since I've been talking to you. I enjoyed it, but I was also kind of just like lagging through it, if that makes sense. I found myself losing focus a lot, but then there were parts where I would be like really interested. So my interest kind of waned throughout, um, but it wasn't a bad book. So I'm going to give it three out of five stars because it was just kind of middle of the road for me. Um, but I am going to be continuing with the next one. It is the last book. This is a trilogy. Um, so I'm excited about that because I want to know how it ends. But yeah, it was also one of those books where I was like, okay, I'm ready to be done with this. Um, and not because it's bad, not because I hated it, just because I was like, I know there are better things out there. But yes, three out of five stars for my final book of 2022. And that means I read 152 books this year, which is my most by far. So I'm really, really happy with that. I almost feel like I read too much. <laughs> like, you know, next year I'm kind of like, I won't be mad if I read less. Um, but yes, I'm very pleased with 152 books. My average rating, however, not great. I think it was 3.42 stars, like well, low three star average rating. So hmm, maybe that's why next year I need to focus on reading less and reading like, I don't know, but it's hard because all the books I read this year, I was interested in every single one of them. I just didn't like some of them. But yeah, hopefully next year my average rating is higher. So before I go, I have one more book to show you that I got for Christmas from my mom, and that is Love From Scratch by Caitlin Hill. I'm pretty sure this is an enemies to lovers romance and there is food involved. You already know one of my favorite tropes ever in romance is food. I love when there's like competing restaurants or like competing bakers, things like that. I'm not sure exactly. There's like desserts on here, so they might be bakers, um, but it says rivalry has never tasted this sweet. So I think she gets an internship, yeah, in a for a cooking channel in Seattle. So that sounds great. I feel like I'm gonna love this because I just love food things in books. It's so great. Um, but yeah, so that is it for this vlog. That is it for 2022. Thank you so much for watching all of my vlogmas if you have. If you have made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave the little cake emoji because love from scratch. Um, but that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, all my social media links will be down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.